So am I the only one that finds it weird that Netflix has been canceling so many shows, right? They get to about the third season mark and then they seem to get canceled. Jessica Jones, Daredevil, uh, what was that? Drew Barrymore one, uh, Santa Clarita Diet. There was One Day at a Time, which was a popular multi-camera sitcom, hit its third season. Surprisingly, Fuller House is ending at season five. I mean, I'm legitimately surprised that they're ending at season five. But I had this thought last night, and this is not based on anything other than my own thoughts and suspicions. But one of the reasons why I think Netflix is canceling so many shows at its third season is to create scarcity and to send examples. How? Yeah, I know. Right. Hear me out on this one. So Netflix, when it was uh, when it came out that they were going to be creating their own shows and that they were going to be uh, reviving other shows, they were seen as this savior. They were seen as, uh, as, as the, the company that's going to come in and shake up the system that they're going to be the ones that come in and save the day. And they did that by reviving, you know, full house as fuller house and, uh, you know, Lucifer and designated survivor and a ton of other shows Netflix has revived and kept alive. And a lot of people out there are very thankful as a result of this shows get to see themselves uh, brought to their conclusion. They get to be finished up. People get the opportunity to see their favorite characters uh, get an ending, not good or bad, just an ending. But then we start catching wind that after season two of Iron Fist and Luke Cage, they're canceled. Daredevil season three, it's gone. Jessica Jones season three, it's gone. Punisher season two, it's gone. And that makes sense if you think about it, right? You have the Disney Plus uh, situation, then buying out Hulu. But if Netflix really wanted to stick it to Disney, they'd stay in business with them. If they really wanted to stick it to Disney, they would continuously make the shows. They would pay out the money in order to screw with Disney. We know Netflix has money to spare. We have, they have money to burn. So why is it that Netflix canceled all those shows? I'm starting to wonder if it's a bold move in order to get their customers to pay more attention to them. Right. It's it's I don't want to come out and say like it's extortion, emotional extortion, or it's like mob tactics or something. But I had this thought last night as I was going to bed and it seems to fit. What if Netflix is canceling some of these shows now as a way to garner enough headlines and enough anger and enough rage that it keeps people around watching the shows that they like when they first come out in that first weekend in order to basically keep them around that they that they feel then compelled to watch as if it's almost like a weird kind of hostage situation. Oh, are you, do you want to see the show continue? Well, you better watch it all in the first weekend. If not, it's going to go away. I mean, it's a bit far-fetched if I'm being honest with you, but think of it in the grander abstract. What's happening right now? Disney Plus is coming out in a couple months. They're losing The Office to go to the NBC Universal streaming app. Uh, Friends is going to be leaving Netflix to go over to the Warner Media app. When that thing comes out, you've got CBS All Access. You've got DC Universe. You've got Hulu still. That's the thing. Amazon Instant. There's a whole bunch of competition in the marketplace. It's either going to be coming or is already here. Hell, Disney Plus itself is rumored to take about 14 to 15% of Netflix subscribers here in the United States, where there are over 100 million people subscribed to the platform. That's not even including the ones that share their password around. So, I mean, so many people now rely on Netflix that Netflix is in a position where they might start losing some of their market share. And if they start losing some of that market share, what better way to keep people around, to keep them paying, to keep them coming back than to, well, Execute a couple shows to remind people that you're the one in charge, that you're the one that's going to be out there and making the content. It's a bold move, if true. Now, I again, I have absolutely no backing of this. I have no no hard data to go by, but it's the only thing in my mind that seems to make the most amount of sense. Netflix sacrifices a couple shows. Because it wants people to be scared that the other shows that they love, the other original shows that they create, are then going to be in danger. Now, something like Stranger Things isn't going to worry about that at all because that's their number one show. Hell, I think that's like the number one show on any streaming platform. It sells merchandise. You know, a lot of people buy it. A lot of people like it. So 
that's you know not going to go away. But I think even next year, season four is going to be its last season. And that's fine, giving it an end. But as we start to see these companies that worked deals with Netflix to bring over their legacy content, move away from the platform to go to their own streaming services, because let's be fair, Netflix and streaming has effectively killed the network television. It's effectively killed elements of cable television. There are some shows that do well, but there are a lot of shows that don't because people say the exact same thing they say when it means when it comes to going to the movies. Eh, you know what? I'll wait for Netflix or I'll wait for it to come on streaming or I'll wait for it to hit digital. I don't have to leave my house. I get the full thing on the on the platform that I want it and the platform that I already pay for. And it's all part of a subscription. That's how they're going to get you. And that's how they're going to keep you. But when there's talk about enough people leaving the platform, and I'm pretty sure their own internal polling data would showcase this that they want to make a splash. They want to keep people around, whether it's going to be through love or fear. And it kind of feels with these mass cancellations, it shows at their third season that it's fear. Now, that was a weird thing too with them is when it came to Sense8, Sense8 was one of the first shows that they did with the Wachowskis. Uh, it had two seasons and it was canceled. Fans were upset. So they gave it a closeout movie. They they gave it a wrap-up film. Santa Clarita Diet had three seasons and an ongoing storyline. No wrap-up film. Daredevil had three on, three seasons and an ongoing storyline with a build-up for season four, giving us full-on, uh, you know, bullseye. No, nothing on that one. However, that could see new life once the two-year cooling-off period is up. Once upon a time when it was canceled, Lifetime came knocking on uh, Netflix's door and said, hey, man, hey, hey, we'll, we'll take it. We'll get it. We'll, we'll totally do it. Right. And you know what Netflix said? No, we're good because they have that two year cool off period because they are the king of the hill. When they love you, they love you. Great. But they're at a point now where they're going to start losing certain things. And I believe they're going to start holding you emotionally hostage. Because if not, your favorite shows are going to go away. But don't worry, the shows that you love will easily be replaced by other shows that will also go away. Netflix was supposed to do away with that particular studio system of canceling shows halfway through their first season before storylines had the chance to wrap up. They've ultimately become what they hate. And now that they have mass competition coming in that could actually very, very, very much impact the bottom line. They're starting to very much embody those traits of the people that they've chosen, to, that, that they promised to kind of fight against. And I'm not going to get rid of my Netflix. There's a lot of stuff on there that I like. They do make a lot of great content. But I want to be, I want to be aware of what they're doing. I want to see exactly what they're doing and how they're doing it. And if I'm right, if I'm even an inkling right, I don't like that at all. I don't like being emotionally manipulated into watching something when there's so many other things to watch and I can't get to it on my own time. That's what made Netflix what it was. Yes, it started off because Reed Hastings didn't want to pay a late fee at Blockbuster, but look what it's become now. And that's great what it's become. It's done a lot for content creation. It's put us in the golden age of television. But now the king of the golden age of television is starting to, well, maybe you look a little bit, uh, look, looking like a little bit old in the years. And something's happening. I don't know. I mean, look, this is simply a theory, a Netflix theory. But I, I do want to hear your thoughts on this one. Uh, do you feel like I have a point? Am I onto something? Am I absolutely 100% wrong? Let me know down in the comments below. I will talk to you guys later. Have yourself a great day. If you made it this far, type Netflix into the chat so I know. And be sure to thumbs up the video because it does help in the YouTube recommendations. Uh, they're kind of slowing down on a lot of it right now, unless you really engage in outrage culture. So help me out and I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one and peace out.